Hey everyone, Joe Waxman here. And in this video, I wanna look at the conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto. Before I begin, guys, please hit the like button. It's really, um, it's a good thing to do for me. It helps me out a lot. And subscribe if you haven't already. Um, come to my class uh, this coming Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. That's Philly, New York time. And um, yeah, if you're not already on the list, email me. Cost is $15 or $10. It's fine too if you need to pay less. And if you need to pay less than that, just email me and let me know your situation. We'll work something out. All right, so what is Jupiter? Um, hopefully you know by now, this is the Jupiter conjunct Pluto series, but briefly, Jupiter expands things. It brings success. It's a great benefic. Um, it's philosophical and religious and, and godly oriented. It connects to the higher higher mind and higher being, higher power. Um, it, it gives us optimism and faith in life and generosity, right? It, goodwill towards, towards our fellow hum, human beings. <clears throat> it's kind of like Santa Claus. It's, it has a spiritual, wise, teacherly quality. It's called the guru sometimes in, you know, in Vedic astrology. Um, <clears throat> Pluto is the outermost planet uh, that we, out of the main planets that we use, um, it is a minor planet or a dwarf planet, I guess you'd call it, but it is very powerful nonetheless, because <clears throat> uh, in astrology, we just, we, we've experienced it uh, cumulatively um, as being extremely powerful. Um, so just because it's a little small does not mean it's any less significant. Um, it rules, it co-rules Scorpio. That's the kind of importance that we give it. Um <clears throat> It deals with things like death and rebirth, uh, psychology, occultism, hidden things, sex, sexuality, deep desires, uh, power and control, <clears throat> shared resources. Uh, Pluto is kind of like a mastermind planet. It really wants total dominance and it really likes to strategize. It is a deep, deep thinker, right? And it can really penetrate my eyes doing something funny. And there it goes. Um, it can really penetrate things. There it is. Yeah. Um, and like it's like a taproot, right? It has that scorpionic uh quality of digging so deep into things. And it and it um and it's kind of so invested in whatever it applies itself to that it's willing to risk its own life or other people's lives. And that's the kind of thing. It's like the Madeleine Albright uh, quote where there's like, you know, a million dead Iraqis or how many, however many. And she's like, well, we think it was a we think it was a, 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 a risk that or it was it was worth it. We think it was worth it. Something like that. I'm butchering it. But, you know, it's like, wow, how generous of you. It, it, it was it was worth it, worth a million dead Iraqi kids or whatever. In any case, that's a tangent, side note. But um, yeah, um, Pluto really does not mind going to, um, you know, b beyond other uh, planets' uh, level of destruction. It's, it can be extremely destructive in other ways, right? And it can, it, it can relate to science, to war, to strategy, um, uh, or devoted, deeply devoted causes, especially with Jupiter conjunct right so you're getting like very um people who who are extreme who have extreme um devotion to their belief systems right they're, they're deeply devoted to a cause they're, they're they can be extremely uh very strategic about what they do or um very scientific and highly destructive all at the same time so <clears throat> that's a brief overview but as usual, we're going to look at all the signs and see how they manifest in real life. And that's one of the things I think is extremely important. Hold on. I bring up there. Um, in order to understand this, because what so many astrologers do, which I don't like doing, is they just they just parrot textbook, um, you know, uh definitions. They'll they'll read a few. <clears throat> descriptions, maybe watch a couple of videos, 
and they just parrot it. Um, maybe they've seen a few charts out of their clients, but you know, unless you're really doing digging deep into the research and looking at so many different people, you're not going to get a clear idea of how it manifests in real life. I see that again and again, and it's not to say that I'm better or doing it right and other people are doing it wrong, but it's it's just it's not, there's a lot of shysty astrology out there there's just like it's not not doing it they're just they you know they're they're getting by on their personality and their looks fortunately or unfortunately i can't do that people don't seem to like me all that much so it's like i can't just be like smile and be like you know say like a parrot you know parrot a textbook you know definition of what this is and get a million views <clears throat> it doesn't work that way for me i actually have to do the work and provide real content. So you're lucky that I'm not like this superficial kind of likable character that everyone just, you know, flocks to you with this, just because I have a, you know, pretty smile, which I don't, I guess. I don't know. I'm not trying to be hard on myself, but um, it's just that way. In any case, enough about me. I This is just briefly, I just want to say like, uh, we're we're going to have the next next conjunction of Jupiter and Pluto. It'll be in Aquarius at 14 degrees in, in February 4th, 2033. So don't hold your breath. But we just did have one in um, Capricorn, right? And I don't know what degree, but that was around uh, like 2020 or 2019, somewhere around there. Um, uh, Ju Pluto moves so slowly that you're going to get pretty much, I believe, one in every sign. Right. I'm not sure how long it takes Jupiter to go around, but it's irrelevant. In any case, let's pull up the Aries one. Aries example. And we're going with. All right. So um, unfortunately, like each each sign, there's sometimes you have to go way back and, and there's not a lot of um, well-known celebrities here. But. Um, all right. We're going to pull up a guy named Wilhelm Röntgen, and he was a scientist or a physicist. And let me just see if I have his Wikipedia, just because, no, but let me, let me, uh, just because I think it's important. All right, let me pull up the Wikipedia, it'll be easier. All right, so he was a mechanical engineer and physicist. Um, he produced and detected electromagnetic, ra electromagnetic radiation in wavelength range known as X-rays or Röntgen rays, an achievement that earned him the inaugural Nobel Prize in physics. Okay, so that's very relevant. Um, because Pluto deals with these very deep things, often science, physics, but also like invisible uh, stuff that's highly destructive, like um, atomic energy, uh, x-rays, like those types of things are very Plutonian, okay? Um, sorry. And here we have it in the ninth house uh, in Aries. Um, sun's in Aries, Mercury's in Aries, but it's also, we're pulling in eighth house and ninth house. So, you know, high level um, uh, achievement, education, and, um, you know, also eighth house, the deep dive. But Pluto all on its own has that, that, that scorpionic deep diving quality, right? Um, so exalted sun, uh, Jupiter is ruling the eighth house, so that's that's significant, and also the fifth house of general education, also uh, North Node and Moon in Scorpio. So he's a deep diver, and look at all these red lines. Man, he's probably had a pretty difficult life, but and a lot of struggles. Um, but he he made some significant achievements in high level academic you know, research, uh, pulling in that scorpionic, deep diving, 
Plutonian vibe. Everything's very fast here. So the Chiron, um, Saturn's strong in Aquarius, and Mars is exalted. Where's Mars? Oh yeah, Mars and Capricorn in the sixth house. So very competitive, hardworking. Um, Saturn, Saturn conjunct Neptune, which is an interesting combination. I haven't looked at it that much yet, but um, that's still scientific, but um, in a very expansive way. Um, and Aquarius also is all very scientific and deals with electricity. Um, so, um, yeah, I think that's pretty pretty significant here. Also, the dispositor of the the ninth house is Mars in Capricorn. Um, let's see what else. Um, yeah, Mercury square Mars. He's obviously pretty belligerent and aggressive, although. Uh, Mars is bonifying this Mercury because it's in Aries. And that's quite good. Plus, Sun is already exalted. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it. I don't want to dwell too much on it, but I think it's just very significant that, um, you know, Jupiter and Pluto for, for somebody who's like really diving deep into physics, science, making discoveries, because that's also a very Plutonian quality of uh, being able to really, you know, dive into the deep cave and discover some hidden gems. So who else had it in, in Aries? Johannes Brahms, the composer, and René de, de, Descartes. Uh, I think, therefore, I am. But we already looked at his chart, so... Um, Let's look at Taurus, and we're gonna pull up Mr. Gandhi, Gandhiji, Mahatma Gandhi. And this is significant because Gandhi was extremely devoted to his cause, and uh, there's he was unshakable, and that's a very Taurian quality, right? And he 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 went on hunger fast. There was nothing that could stop him. Right, he was willing to sacrifice his own life. That's Pluto, especially Pluto and Taurus. Right, so stubborn, so like, uh, just sit here until I'm dead if you don't do what I want. You know, it's like Pluto and Taurus, especially combined with Jupiter, where it's mixing with philosophy, beliefs, religion. Right, it, it's so powerful, so deep. And when these people put their mind to something, there's nothing can stop them, especially you know, in a fixed sign, and especially in Taurus. Right, I mean, it's just like. The immovable rock, you know, what, and if he's going to decide to do something that he believes in, it's just, that's it. It's done. Just, you know, it's as good as done. I mean, he got rid of, he got rid of, you know, the UK in, 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 in India. One, he won India's independence. That's historic and revolutionary. Uh, Jupiter's ruling the sixth house. And the third house. So the sixth house for definitely for conflict and enemies. And the third house for, you know, intellect. He was also a lawyer, right? So that's, you know, I mean, he's got Saturn and Sag. Jupiter often represents law. Jupiter and Saturn usually. Um, seventh house for sure. And this is uh, moving into the eighth house as well. So you know that deep and it, uh, this moon is is pretty interesting because also look, look how strong this mars is and he was very sexual but he overcame his his um his lower you know uh drives his lower urges that was very important to him uh he overcame that um but very strong marker uh mars here is sorry mars um and square this this very prideful moon in leo but prominent in the tenth house with North Node, um, it's, yeah. So that's that's intent. There was a lot like, you know, um, he was very. This is this is heavy on the heart. You know, Pl square Pluto and Jupiter. Jupiter's not bad, but Pluto definitely. And then a, and then a Mars, you know, and then Mars opposite Pluto. So he was a fighter, real fighter, and very dis 
just not easily satisfied unless he, you know, we're, uh, Leo in the 10th house needs to be the king, right? Um, sort of why, you know, Scorpio ascendants or late, late Libra, uh, extremely prideful, extremely even narcissistic at times. I know I have it, but um, that's how I know. But also, um, I, I've witnessed a lot of that. But um, yes, yeah, so this is a very like kingly sort of position. Um, even though it's a moon, moon's not as, as bold as the sun. It's a little more hidden, but like deep inside, like plus North node, like he really needed to lead and be on top and, and for his own pride. So he was pretty unstoppable, pretty darn stubborn. It was very, you know, ridiculously devoted is what this would be. Um, so who else has it? Picasso, but Picasso has a whole Torian stellium. Vladimir Lenin, right? Uh, you know, the Russian leader. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Johannes Vermeer, the painter. James Joyce, writer. Henry Matisse, painter. And Baruch Spinoza, who was a philosopher. Um, I know that because Einstein said he believed in the god of Spinoza. So I, believe, I think that's the same person. Um... So yeah, let's let's move on to Gemini. So Gemini, before I even get there, Jupiter is uh, in detriment in Gemini, right? So that's important to remember. So there could be some degraded qualities of this Jupiter. Well, let's look. Rudolf Hess. So who's Ru Rudolf Hess? Rudolf Hess was a Nazi, a high-level Nazi, who was a a he was like um a deputy to Hitler. He was high up, right? He was he was a very prominent Nazi, and then he was he was jailed, imprisoned, and then he died in jail. Or something like that. Um, but yes, yeah, very prominent, and then again, North Node. In Aries, I mean that's besides this. But whenever North Node is in the tenth house, um, these people are are ridiculously devoted to their career and to public recognition and success and all that. There is nonstop go to that level, to that, to that, in that direction. Right? North Node always creates an obsession. Um, Jupiter and Pluto and Neptune, all in Gemini. Uh, 11th house, but uh, moving into the 12th house, pretty close to the 12th house cusp, right? So 11th house would be, I mean, so sun is in the 11th house, so that's bringing in the, the social network groups, right? 11th house wants to belong to a group, but also thinking about society, think about the big picture. And that's what the Nazis were doing. It's very political, social, political. And then 12th house is going into the subconscious, right? So very, very deep uh, in the mind, starting to become part of the, the, the person because 11, uh, 12th, 1st, and 2nd, these are all uh, very personal houses of the self. Right? So uh, very deeply, um, very deep beliefs in a Gemini fashion. So intellectual, um, you know, overriding the, the intellect is overriding and Jupiter, um, ruling the philosophy is getting becoming too intellectual. It's not Jupiter. It's not very Jupiterian. It's not very expansive Jupiter. Jupiter in Gemini is um, good for writing, good for Gemini things, communicating. You know, probably ra rappers will benefit from it. Writers, uh, communicators, um, you know, things like that. Intellectuals. Um, but philosophers know it's getting very small and contracted there. So uh, you can see why somebody with not a very well-developed Jupiter or contracted Jupiter would fall for something like Nazi ideology. It's not very evolved. Um, however, he does have a Venus in um, exalted Venus in the ninth house. But Jupiter is ruling the ninth. Jupiter is ruling Pisces. So Jupiter is ruling his philosophy. 
So there could be some things like he could be a mixed bag. Like he could for women, he could he could just be like all accepting, you know, like just oh my god, I love you. Um, even though well, Moon is in Capricorn, so the kind of women that he's gonna get are, you know, not as strong, degraded. Jupiter is also ruling the sixth house of you know conflicts, enemies, hard work, service, um, things of that nature. So um, yeah. I mean, pretty deep, uh, very deep belief system around, um, you know, intellectual kind of um, over intellectualism. And his Mercury is in Aries, so Arian, right? Arian ideology. And that's, yeah, I mean, the Nazis were very much perf um, personified a, a Aries kind of uh, uh, archetype. Saturn's in Libra, so in South Node in the fourth house. So he wanted fairness and rule of law at home. Fourth house is very political often. Um, but um, very ruthless ideology. Pluto's taking this, this uh, limited Jupiter in a very, very deep way and then going into the subconscious realm, the 12th house, 11th, 12th. All right. Um, Josephine Baker, who was an actress and dancer a long time ago, also Gemini combination. And then Luis Ferdinand Celine, who was a novelist. And Nikita Khrushchev, who was a, a Russian communist high political uh, leader. I don't think he was president or something like that. Um, but very high up there. Um, so you'll see a lot of politics because the Plutonic um, desire to control and mastermind um pluto's the puppet master you know so it always has that desire to you know control this is um pulling the strings of the puppet the marionette you know that's what that is in case you're wondering yes um it's interestingly just as a side note if if there's a person with cancer ascendant and moon is in the seventh and capricorn uh, this can be a helper too. This this person could be, yeah, potentially cold and ruthless and hard towards others, but they can also help sick people. That's the up. Uh, that's the other side of a debilitated or in detriment planet. Planets in poor dignity have good uses. You know, in, in each house, it'll have a good use and an, and a, a very poor use. And there's different expressions of that, but this can be okay. I've seen it. All right. Let's go to Cancer. And we're going to go to Mandela Nelson. Uh, interestingly, somebody said, you know, the Mandela effect, that was named after Nelson Mandela because some people believe that he died in prison, you know, and then he obviously didn't die in prison. So I don't, I think that's just the way the mind works. I think people just don't have a good grasp of their memory and they're susceptible to um, various psychological conditioning. I don't think that the Mandela effect is, is a real thing. Um, although maybe it is at, in certain times and maybe it's not in other times because there are other timelines. However, I don't know. In any case, um, I don't think he died in prison. So it's <laughs> obviously not. Right. He became the president of South Africa and ended apartheid. Right. Similar vibe to Gandhi. Right. Uh, Jupiter is exalted in cancer. Jupiter is the ascendant lord. So it's just out of detriment. So it's just which is interesting. Interesting. Right. One degree in, in, in exaltation. Conjunct Pluto. So the very deep, deep belief. Right. Very deep philosophy. Philosophy that is unshakable, that, that will not be deterred. Um, somebody with Jupiter conjunct Pluto, they're just so deeply rooted in their belief system that it's just like, you know, they'll 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 win. They'll they'll go to that to whatever degree to 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 um fulfill their belief system. Right? You know, and if they have to spend I don't know how many years in jail or be arrested how many however many times um you know it doesn't matter they're gonna do that they're gonna go there 
interestingly enough, he has his son in the eighth house, which is, um, I mean, death and rebirth, right? And that played out. Uh, hidden and then coming to light. It's it's a little different than the 12th house. Um, the eighth house has this, this very um, uh, strong polarity between clearly hiding and clearly rising. Whereas the, the 12th house has this mysterious um, uh, coinciding uh, quality where they're both happening at the same time. There's the loss and then there's the mirage or the ghost. And that's why creativity um, and imagination and movies and cinema, the false there's a false pretense of the self in the 12th house. Whereas the eighth house is not the false pretense. It's divided in time, right? Sometimes they're hidden, completely hidden and gone. And then sometimes they're out and, you know, rising, you know, rising like the phoenix. So it's that, that phoenix quality, the death and the rebirth. And because he was jailed for so long, then his rebirth, his rise was also very powerful. Okay. But it can happen differently in different for different like there can be just like periodic rise and fall for for other people with eighth house son. So they say like don't go into politics if you're an eighth house son because you'll lose your reputation. There'll be that fall. However, knowing the way it works, if you've been held down for a really long time, then you can count on a very long rise. There's that. Uh, Jupiter is ruling the ascendant, so exalted, and conjunct Pluto, and Jupiter is ruling the fourth house, so homeland, right? Love of homeland, politics, that's very prominent. Um, he does have a Scorpio moon, so again, the Scorpio quality, but also 12th house, the hidden, very deep, deep feeling, um, very strong watery, combinations here sun loosely trine moon that's quite good um let me just check here nothing unusual no he's just very 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 um devoted in his belief system um, that's quite a scientific mind also with Saturn and Europe, Saturn and Mercury conjunct in the ninth house. Um, well, this could be religious, philosophical as well, but if he applied it to science and logical thought, he could be very, you know, that would be quite good. Um, South node, Venus, Gemini. Thing. Venus is ruling the sixth and the eleventh, but I'm digressing. Mars, Mars in Libra, that's uh, detrimental, um, but very peaceful. Um, in any case, yeah. Oh, he's got his North Node, so South Node and North Node on the. Oh, by the way. Um, this is a double double D rated chart, conflicted, unverified. So I just, uh, for just closure, just thought I mentioned that it's important to note that whenever it happens. Um, but the North Node on the Ascendant could be, you know, um, could be accurate because uh, North Node on the Ascendant, especially in second half of life, will tend to make the person very prominent. Uh, really boost their identity. When he was young, he's probably extreme flirt, extremely flirty. Love the women. Right? Uh, Venus and Gemini conjunct the Descendant and South Node. Had a lot of girlfriends when he was young. I'm sure. I didn't read that. I just know it. But let's move on. All right, for Leo. All right, we're gonna go to the gates of hell for this one. Bill Gates of hell. Um, there's that. Um, he's a Scorpio sun, Venus, and and 
Saturn. And then there's that quote, there's that video where he's like, we just take these GMO, GMO vaccines and we stick them in little kids' arms, you know, stick them right in their, in their bodies or whatever. Like, so gross. I'm sorry, but does anyone like Bill Gates? I don't think so. Uh, unless you're a psychopath yourself. But he's got this extremely, um, you know, this is a boomer generation. Uh, Pluto and Leo uh, definitely has, it's very strong, but there's a lot of ego involved with Pluto and Leo. Um, you know, and it, that can be good or bad, right? It's not, obviously not not all boomers are bad. I'm, I'm not, I don't dislike the, the baby boomer generation at all. Um, but there is a lot of ego and pride um, and here it's in the second house and he's like a bajillionaire, right? Um, he's got tons of money. Um, and um, yeah, how many people say he's like a genius? I don't think he's like a genius. I think he, he weaseled his way into Microsoft and there's a whole lot of shadiness around that. His father was a eugenicist. Um, yeah, but um, you know, the second house dealing with knowledge resources so he's got tons of resources right jupiter alone in the second house is very strong pluto jupiter pluto ego pride control you know wanting to control you know he owns the most farmland in the united states he he's a, he owns a, like like tons of vaccine patents um resources right i mean the guy's ridiculous with his resources um, there's a really strong sextile to Neptune. So um, lies and deceit are also a part of this, this, um, you know, uh, conjunction. Um, it's not too far. Neptune's not too far from his son. Uh, so I don't think he has a problem lying about anything. Uh, interestingly enough. So um he's got Uranus pretty much conjunct the ascendant even though it's out of sign but that is a, that is somebody who's very you know um independent minded um technological and he works with computers so that makes a lot of sense um Uranus can be can be many things social political uh technology computers electricity internet um right, re revolutionary rebellion um it's an opposition to chiron in the seventh chiron in the seventh i have chiron in the seventh chiron in the seventh is is kind of difficult because then you're attracting very chironic people and your relationships with other people become very chironic um and chiron gets a bad rap but sometimes it works really well Right, like, um, like Ju in the Jupiter Chiron video, I, there's a lot of a lot of good um, combinations with Chiron. But anyway, Neptune is also square the ascendant, so that's um, you know, again bringing out the the lies, deception, deceit of of Neptune. Jupiter is ruling the sixth and the ninth, so very so. His philosophy is all about power and control and ego and pride and resources. And um, he's very um, competitive, right? Possibly even vindictive with the Scorpio, um, Sun, Venus, and Saturn. Um, yeah. Bill Gates is a pretty shady character. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think you already know that. Uh, and North Node is in SAD, so it's activating this whole resource and philosophy of power and control and egotism with all his billions of dollars. Yeah, that's intense. Um, so who else who else has this combination? Um, oh, I forgot to do, uh, let's move back. In Cancer, sorry about this. In Cancer, so James Dean, obviously Nelson Mandela, Sean Connery, Warren Buffett. Um, again, brilliant strategy, Warren Buffett. And this is Cancer, Rita Hayworth, 
Um, Jim Jones, he's a great example, but I already did his. He has it perfectly in the seventh house, Pluto and Jupiter, you know, wanting to control people with philosophy, right? George Soros, another one, Bill Gates contemporary, who wants to control the, the Democratic Party with his billions, probably has the same combination as, as um, or similar to Bill Gates, but there's no birth time for George Soros, so we don't know, but very similar to Bill Gates. Um, Ray Charles, not similar at all, great singer. And then Gorbachev, the Russian leader. So really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then who has it in Leo? Bill Gates. So that was all cancer. And this is Leo. Mick Jagger. Robert De Niro, who's kind of a jerk. Um, Chris Jenner. Um, again, the ego of these guys is like, Anthony Bourdain, who is awesome. Um, Julio Iglesias, singer. Whoopi Goldberg. Um, Bill Maher, who's annoying. Um, Roger Waters. Uh, Roger Waters definitely portrays this this conjunction. He's all about like, you know, his his philosophy is he, he makes such a big deal out of his philosophy, and he's very anti-Semitic. He hates Israel, and like. I mean, you know, Israel's not perfect, but like what government is? Uh, Israel is no worse than any other government. In fact, there's a lot of governments who are, um, you know, e equally as bad. So it's just, it just, it's just rude and pretty hateful to pick on Israel when there's so many governments who are out there doing horrible things. And then Johnny Rotten, um, anarchy. Jonathan Rotten, let's call him by his full name. Jonathan Rotten. I'm just kidding. It's John Lydon, actually, but. Jonathan Rotten of Sex Pistols fame, um, who is also extremely arrogant, uh, but um, sticks to his guns. Uh, he's very faithful to his original anarchistic philosophy, unlike many other fake punk rockers. In any case, let's move on. Virgo. With Virgo, there wasn't many good examples unfortunately but i'm going to go with ice cube even though i already did his chart um because well jupiter is obviously de in detriment in virgo so you're not going to get great examples of this um but ice cube is a decent example ice cube is very devoted to his cause which is the black community in fact, more than his music, when you go to his website, you see the first thing he's, he's, he posts on there is about um, helping the black community. He's all about helping the black community. community. And I think that's great. And I think, you know, um, people should stand up for their own community that they belong to. Not that we, we can't support others, but it's, it's kind of disingenuous a little bit when people, I don't know, I don't want to. It feels a little bit weird to me, like when people are like, any case, whatever. I'm not talking about Ice Cube in that sentence. I'm talking about Ice Cube now. All right. Um, so this is 12th house. So it's it's um it's very it's going into um a very deep place, the personal psychology, psychological, uh, subconscious mind, uh, very deep rooted belief system. Uh, yeah, disposited by Mercury and Gemini. Um, just interestingly enough, he's got, I, I know I already said this, but like this Mars is so um, stressed out and it's ruling the second house of his speech and uh, seventh house. Um, that's why he always appears angry because it's got this Yod. Now, people think Yod is, is really great, wonderful. It's not. It's got two extreme, two very difficult aspects on it. And then he also has the opposition. Um, the, they call it, there's all this like superstitious it, superstition in, in astrology, like they, they call it the finger of God. I, it's really just stressing a planet out because it's, it's two, in this case, three negative aspects, stressful aspects on the planet. So you've got the moon, moon, uh, Mars, 
uh, in conjunct. And then he's got a Saturn Mars in conjunct with Venus here. Right. And that's that's pretty intense. I mean, it's it's disturbing his emotions. His I mean, luckily he's got, you know, moon and cancer, so it's in good dignity. Um but um and then moon uh Mars opposite Mercury. So he's very argumentative. Mars in conjunct Saturn is is very stressful, um, aggressive, um yeah, potentially potentially violent, right? And that's why he always appears like this. Um, he like he gives off a very genuine gangsta vibe, even though he's not a gangster, <laughs> and he never was. Um, he was actually, you know, his parents were uh, made sure that he went to a good school. Like I researched that, and so, and his son is square the the um, the nodes, so that's definitely. Um, and Pluto is square the sun as well. So it's got a lot of rough aspects. But in any case, um, Jupiter conjunct Pluto, that it's that he's also got Uranus, so it's radical. But as far as his belief system, it's it's very deep and devoted. It's also south node, but Jupiter is ruling the yeah, um Pisces, sixth house north 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 node. So service to others in Pisces, so very generous. Um, compassionate North Node in Pisces, Jupiter's ruling it. I mean, it's limited because Jupiter's in Virgo, so it's not like he's extremely generous, but he's going to be generous to you in a very limited way. So he's very generous to the Black community, right? Jupiter's also ruling the third house, so his intellect and communication. Um, going to Virgo and conjunct with Pluto. Right? So, yeah. Um, Jupiter and Pluto is going to be it's it's that devoted devotional belief system, deep belief system, psychological, um, strategic, masterminded. Virgo is service to others, right? So he's got this continuation, uh, Pisces, Virgo. In case, um, who else has it in Virgo? Will Smith, Renee Zellweger, Hugh Jackman, Kate Blanchett, Tom York. Paul Rudd, Naomi Watts, and Peter Dinklage. And these people who, these other people, I, I couldn't find anything other than their, I mean, I didn't have, I didn't research them very much, but they don't seem to um, exhibit this quality that well. So I didn't want to, um, obviously people, you know, it's not going to be as uh, potent or strong, you know, in other people, unless maybe you, if you knew them well. Right. Like if we knew these people really well, we could see, oh, they're extremely devoted to this cause or that cause. Right. It's that that Pluto Pluto takes the Jupiter belief system very deep. All right. But it's going to be limited in Virgo, like I said. All right, let's go to Libra. And we're going to go back to the founding of our country with, oh, shoot. Typed in Washington. With Mr. George Washington, the first president of the United States. And we have a good time for him, which is amazing, right? Look at his chart. Awesome, awesome chart. Let's just admire his chart, first of all. What a Renaissance man being so diverse, first of all. Mars and Scorpio in the in the seventh house, like do not do not f with this guy. This guy will straight up murder you. <laughs> Mars in the seventh house is aggressive. Mars in in Scorpio is, I mean, okay, maybe he won't murder you, but like it's very powerful, right? Very powerful Mars. Um, and he's not that nice. Let's face it. Moon is in Capricorn in the ninth house. Uh, Moon in Capricorn is can be cold, hard inexpressive right um but sun and pisces sun and pisces i mean the, so he's got like the you know he's got he's got many different venus and pisces so he's you know he, he can be very loving right especially in 11th house matters so groups networks social political right uh mercury and, and aquarius um anything stationary let me just check here Oh, 
Oh yeah, Neptune. Let's check out Neptune. Yep, almost stationary Neptune, which is interesting. Um, that's I would not have guessed that, but yeah, this Neptune is is very potent. It's in the second house of speech, so he must be a very a very excellent speaker, and that's important for a president because you know that's how you win people over. One way, but he he was a military general and he led the uh, U.S. Um, towards independence um, in the Revolutionary War. Right? And Jupiter's in Libra, Pluto's in Libra, nine degrees in the sixth house of competition, enemies, daily, daily grind, work, service to others. Right? Jupiter is ruling the, the eighth house. So very deep and um, strategic and 11th house political social dispositing the sun and exalted venus um, saturn is in aries interesting but it's conjunct it's it's conjunct a very strong venus so that's di that's different so yeah his leadership is is not yeah saturn and aries but but because venus is so strong venus rules libra libra is the sign of saturn's exaltation so this makes it very unique for leadership plus libra is very um strongly um uh represented in his chart with jupiter here um how's jupiter let's see jupiter no it's not that slow um yeah so jupiter pluto so for for um a lot of times you'll see like war heroes, generals, naval commanders, military strategists, um, even like you'll you'll probably um, I haven't found any that rep have this, but uh, like chess players because uh, Pluto can be very very strategic because it's it's trying to look at the whole picture and mastermind every single thing, right? So it's because it has that that extremely far out view, it can see everything. It can see all the other planets. It can see Neptune, Uranus, Chiron, Saturn, Jupiter, uh, everything, the sun, the earth, all the planets. And it wants to control the, the whole board game. That's Pluto's uh, MO. That's what it wants. Pluto is also a square moon. So that's quite difficult for him, for his satisfaction. Not a happy camper, extremely, like um very strong very tough but you need somebody who's extremely strong and tough in order to win the war um it's dedicated right um yeah jupiter ruling the eighth house also is going to be um it's going to have a a, a a platonic vibe anyway so this is very uh very deeply um and then mars and scorpio um deep thinking strategic uh competitive um intellectual very savvy combination here libra is very um dispositor is exalted uh, libra is very balanced and intellectual all right so that's that's george washington for winning the war and becoming the first president very very interesting mercury's in aquarius can culminating so it's, it's you know mercury in aquarius is quite inventive can be can be brilliant i'm just going to pause it for one sec sorry about that Let's go back. Uh, one more thing about the difference between Mars in Scorpio and Mars in Aries. Um, if I had to choose between like Mars in Aries and Mars in Scorpio as a fighter, if I was an individual fighter, like an MMA, I would rather have Mars in Aries. <clears throat> but if I was leading an army, I'd rather have Mars in Scorpio because Scorpio is more strategic, right? 
And you need a bit more strategy if you're leading an army in, in war rather than, you know, Ares, which is just full on assault, right? Um, you know, action, you, you punch first, think later kind of thing. Uh, Scorpio sits back and, and takes it all in. It's got the, you know, the connection to Pluto. So, you know, the Scorpio Pluto vibe is very strong. Um, you know, it wants to plan its attack and therefore it can plan for a, a whole army rather than just itself. Aries is all about the self. Scorpio is all about um, others and shared resources, right? So, Excellent for George Washington, leader of an army. All right. And who else has it in Libra? Uh, Beyonce, Serena Williams, Nicole Richie, Jennifer Hudson, and Raphael, the painter. Not the Ninja Turtle, the painter. It's important to make that clear. All right. All right, let's go to Scorpio. In Scorpio, <clears throat> there's not a lot, because we have to go way back. But let's go, um, I found a, a pretty good representation of this. Um, wait, wait. One of these is wrong um, because somebody, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, no, let me check this one. Yeah, that's right. I got to delete the other one. All right. This is not actually his birth time. Let me see. Yeah, this is not his birth time. This is a moon chart. Um, unfortunately, there was very it was very slim pickings because look, we have to go back to 1745. But this is so this is his moon chart. Um, but it seems to work pretty well. Um, but um, so Al Alessandro Volta, who is he? Um, you know the the word volt. Well, that's where it comes from. So he was an Italian physicist, chemist, Catholic, who was a pioneer of electricity and power he's accredited at his, as the inventor of the electric battery and the discoverer of methane he invented the voltaic pile um yeah electrochemistry all right so that's all extremely relevant we're, we're talking about jupiter and pluto in scorpio especially i mean this seems to work pretty well uh third house all right from the moon Moon and Virgo, very analytical, intellectual, right? Um, so we're not going to get to, I mean, we could say Jupiter rules the floor. It doesn't because we don't know. We don't know the houses. Um, but we can say, look, I mean, it's extremely strong trine between Neptune. So that's also excellent for science, scientific thinking, because you, you need to involve, especially for discovery. People who discover a lot need a good Neptune because... Um, imagination you need to be able to uh create situations that are are, are are new you have to you have to imagine like tesla and, and einstein both had very strong neptunian influences right um so both scorpio and pluto deal with um science and discovery um deep digging research that kind of thing I mean, North Node, if this is accurate, North Node in the eighth house would be, I mean, it's not accurate, but it is accurate to a degree because the moon chart still uh, represents, you know, something. It's it's significant. It's the second most important chart um, after the natal chart uh, for, you know, you know, it's good if you want to analyze your own chart just by yourself, look at your moon chart, you know, after your ascendant chart, look at your moon chart. In any case. Um, it's got a lot of Aquarius, which is also very scientific. Uh, yeah. Um, just pull up here real quick. Very slow Mercury. That's quite significant. And oh, Pluto is very slow. Let's, let's look at that. 
Venus and Mars, mutual reception. Uh, yeah, Venus, Mars, opposition. That's interesting. Um, looking at Pluto, so he's texting. Yeah, five days. So it's pretty slow. Um, but yeah, so Jupiter and Pluto together can, especially in the planet like a sign like Scorpio, can can do like can be very very scientific, discover new things. Um, yeah. Um, so Alessandro Volta, um, a modern. So we had scorpio recently so there's going to be a lot of modern people but like most of the people um who jupiter and jupiter scorpio who are young uh young millennials um i did not know who they were so i didn't include many but Lil baby who's a rapper and dakar montgomery who's an actor so whatever let's let's move along let's go to sagittarius and we have another unknown person because um it happened a long time ago and we have some real youngsters with, with this combination. Um, but um, we're not going to worry about that. So I just pulled up these unknown, you know, the Wikipedia for these unknown guys because, you know, need to figure out who they are. I can't always remember. So he was a British flag officer in the Royal Navy. His inspirational leadership, grasp of strategy, that's Pluto, and unconventional tactics brought about a number of decisive British naval victories during, during the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest naval commanders in history. So that's so significant for this, especially in Sag, because Jupiter is... Um, Jupiter is in domicile in Sagittarius. So here we have in the second house. So um, Mars and Mars and Scorpio in the ascendant, right? We just saw it with George Washington on the descendant. So Mars and Scorpio on the ascendant. So that's also very significant. Jupiter, Pluto here in Sag, uh, second house. So ability to command and lead and speak. Uh, that's very strong. Here, uh, Jupiter is, hold on, yeah, all right. Um, Jupiter's ruling the fifth house, with Uranus there, and um, obviously the second house. So he, he probably pr did pretty well for himself as far as resources and wealth, probably made some good money, and um, uh, the fifth house would deal with um, creativity, teaching, general education, but also just performance, being like being in the spotlight, being on the stage, uh, but being creative as well. Interestingly, yeah. um, Leo, Sun, and Sun, and Leo. He's got it. I mean, Sun and Libra. Sun and Libra is interesting because I guess you know the the. Mars and Scorpio right on the ascendant makes up for that because Sun and Libra is a little weak. It's not going to be a great commander with this thing, but obviously not. Um, but this Jupiter and Pluto is, is, is going to also be very, very strong for leading, commanding. Jupiter is a leader. It's a teacher. It's a guru. Right. So yeah, let's not, let's not spend too much time. Um, Maximilian Robespierre, who was a lawyer, uh, Jupiter and Libra, that makes a lot of sense. He was a famous lawyer and civil. He was very early on, um, you know, active in civil rights. So he's like kind of used law for, to help people. And that, that fits very much. Um, and then uh, some younger people, some some uh, Gen Zers, I guess, or maybe millennial who knows joey badass is a rapper um, john calvin who's the calvin not calvin klein but um the calvinist religion he was a religious reformer so jupiter sag religion philosophy right uh calvinism 
um, Pluto, you know, like the changing, like deep, like power, and you know, devoted. Pluto likes to transform. Uh, James Monroe, a founding father, right? All these very strong characters who, who are just, you know, can move mountains. And Andre Messina, who was another military commander. Okay, so strategy. All right, let's move on. Uh, Capricorn. Oh, did I check this? It's here. Yeah, I did. Pluto. Okay, so. Capricorn. Walter Scott. All right, Walter Scott, um, an unknown author, but you probably know some of his works. He wrote Rob Roy, and he was born in, in Scotland, right? So he's a Scot. And Jupiter and um, Pluto are in Capricorn, right? Conjunct, pretty much conjunct the IC. So homeland, Scotland. He's going to write about Scotland. He's going to be all about Scotland. He's going to represent Scotland, right? And so he wrote some, some really famous books, Rob Roy being one of them. Um, yeah, uh, he's got a really nice trine to Uranus in the eighth house, which uh, that's going to be, you know, good. Uh, Uranus, especially a trine, is going to make it more shocking, independent, dramatic. Eighth house is very deep, you know, heavy. Um, death, sex, drama, um, as well as Pluto. Jupiter's ruling the third house, so the writing, and the sixth house, uh, very nose to the, it's a bookish house, obviously, very competitive and hardworking and daily routine, mundane. Um, exalted sun conjunct Saturn, who's very Saturnian himself, and then Mercury's exalted in Virgo, conjunct Neptune, um, so imagination, right? Um, but would you guess that he was a writer because Third Lord is um, debilitated in the fourth house? So I, yeah, I mean, that's interesting, right? So we have to, we have to, we can't just rely on what we think we know. We have to look, make sure it fits. Plus he also has a pretty much, it's it's a, it's a, it's a loose grand trine, but it's still, it's still quite there in, in earth sign. So very practical, right? And, um, Mercury is, I mean, it's a little, it's a little out, but we're still getting this trinal um, influence from uh, exalted Mercury. Um, let's see here. I mean, yeah, there's not that much support. So he's not like, I mean, he's not like super famous, but he is famous enough, right? So we see like, there's some, you know, it's not as strong as it could be obviously, but it's still quite good. Uh, it's quite rebellious, Saturn square Uranus. So that's going to come through in his works, you know, this re rebellion. And I think Rob Roy, if I remember correctly, is about um, rebellion, you know, and war and fighting and death and honor. And, you know, and he's got the strong Leo representation, Venus and Leo, Sun and Saturn and Leo. So the creative uh, creativity and then the Mercury conjunct Neptune, even though it's in Virgo, so creative, but in a very intellectual way. And then let's just see here. Uranus is very slow. So Mercury gets very extremely high scores. So even though his third lord's not great, his Mercury is quite great. And then check Uranus. Yeah, not, not that close station but south node conjunct uranus also it's in taurus but still south node conjunct uranus um does create a lot of um awareness and certain kind of brilliance right. in this case it's taurian and eighth house taurus for writing is excellent um in any case so that's walter scott mr rob roy um who else has it in Capricorn? Very few people. Alois Senefelder, who is an actor and a writer, and a Pope, Pope Sixtus V. <laughs> um, funny. In any case, 
um, Capricorn, right? Jupiter and Capricorn, dogma. Capricorn is very dogmatic. So you, you, you would likely see some Catholic type people with Jupiter and Capricorn or Jupiter, and then a Pope because, you know, Pluto likes to control, right? likes power and control and mastery over everything. It's obsessive. Pluto is extremely obsessive. It wants, it wants to control at all costs. So let's move into Aquarius. And we get another bunch of people who you've never heard of, mostly. Um, we're going to go with this guy, Omar Khayyam, who is actually significant. And we'll just pull up the Wikipedia real quick just to tell us about him. Um, he was an Iranian, Persian, and known as, he was a polymath, known as for, for his contribution to mathematics, astronomy, philosophy, and Persian poetry. Um, so he, yeah, he was a brilliant guy, basically, and he did like all different, you know, kind of um, intellectual pursuits, cubic equations, intersection of conics, understanding of parallel axiom, astronomer. Um, so yeah, all around, all around. Philosopher. Um, right. And then he has basically a grand air trine, right? And very strong first house with Gemini ascendant, sun, Venus, and Mercury all in Gemini and moon all in the first house. So I mean, this guy's loaded. Uranus, Uranus in Libra, trying the sun and the ascendant. And then a little further out, um, MC, Pluto, and Jupiter in Aquarius. Very strong, very, very strong. And then if we look here, I know there's something go going on here. All right, pretty slow Mercury, uh, slow Moon, um, slow Venus, Jupiter. Jupiter is very slow, and so is... Um, yeah, Jupiter's the slowest. Well, let me check. Let me check. All right, go Jupiter. Yeah, two days. So Jupiter's almost stationary. And then let's look at Pluto. 11 days. Not as slow. Uranus. Yeah, all right. So, so Jupiter is extremely slow. It's about to go retrograde. So it's very potent. Um, yeah, Jupiter is ruling the seventh and eighth house. So eighth house for digging deep into all kinds of matters. And, um, 11th, 11th house, um, also the South node, um, 11th house is, is, is also just, you know, has an Aquarian vibe. It's just very, um, big minded. Um, good for a lot of things, usually groups, networks, but also like, I mean, it definitely has a technological aspect to it, for very progressive, forward thinking. Um, and it, so it's kind of like a doubling over the, of this Aquarian vibe. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is very extremely strong. So, all right. Um, Who else has it? Oru Nobunaga, who is uh, a Japanese um, Japanese leader who, again, was a military. He was called the Great Unifier because he defeated all these other uh, Japanese leaders and unified Japan. Again, this strategy, right? This the Pluto rules strategy and masterminding, and Jupiter really enhances that. So you get all these kind of military leaders military political leaders who can really do well as in like overcoming and mastering other 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 groups winning the wars and defeating enemies and all that and pluto is very powerful for that uh louis eugene marie botain was a philosopher and a theologian right so again similar jupiter pluto uh, let's go to Pisces. And I already did Mr. Abe Lincoln, but um, he was the best example that 
um, out of all the people in Pisces. All right. And we know that he was extremely devoted to his cause, which was um, his primary cause because I, you know, well, at least according to Wikipedia, and there's a lot of controversy, right? But um, uh, being a good president, and which, which in it, in this case, if it was uh, worked out to be for um, ending slavery, um, that was his secondary goal. But he was um, for civil rights and and freedom for all people. Um, apparently, as far as I can tell, right. I mean, some people question that, and some people question the whole civil war, and and there's probably you know rights on both sides there are points to be made on both sides but in any case um he was very strong in his belief system right jupiter conjunct pluto in pisces um pisces is very compassionate too so we can't ignore that aspect pisces is all accepting all embracing so as far as like you know his ability to um see beyond the the, the conditioning of the times and say look slavery is wrong we can't treat other human beings like this we need to let them be free. He was for that. As far as I can tell, he was for that, right? And that's how it happened. That's how it ended. And, you know, he was also um, a strategist for the Civil War. You know, he helped win the war. He was leading the charge in that. Um, again, it's it's the second house so of this speech. You know, it's, you know, the, the, the cusp is a little further away, but it's still strongly influencing the second house cusp. And so his ability to speak and influence people, that's very uh, prominent as well. I mean, extremely strong ascendant with, with sun conjunct the ascendant. Um, moon and Capricorn, probably not that cheery or happy. Um, you know, moon and Capricorn can suffer a bit from lack of expression and also the square of the Mars. He did not like to be aggressive in person, I would think, right, with this combination. Although Mars is exalted in, in, in Capricorn, so there's something, but it's still, it's a lot of tension. Probably, it's probably kind of crabby a lot of times. They did have North Node conjunct Uranus, which is also um, in Scorpio, so very prominent for, oh, look at this. I just realized uh, Uranus is stationary. So very powerful social, political awareness, awake and aware, um, politics, uh, you know, being aware of, of, of situations um uh deeply because uranus is is the big picture big great awareness illumination enlightenment right and then scorpio is like deep 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 right so it's a very you know they consider uh, uranus exalted in scorpio uh that's where i have it so he would he would have made a great astrologer too with this combination um but uh yeah very powerful Uranus often you see with politicians as well because social political concerns are Uranian. Um, yeah. Um, and then North Node, it's 10th whole sign house, but ninth house of philosophy, but also career. Um, yeah. And then he does have somewhat of an ability to deceive people. Saturn's here. Saturn's going to restrict this. It's not as freewheeling as somebody like Joe Biden who just doesn't know how to tell the truth, right? Doesn't even know what the truth is. But, um, you know, Saturn conjunct Neptune here is going to have a bit of, I mean, definitely, I don't know. I don't know. Um, there's going to be some issues with um, deception um, going on, but not not super bad because Saturn kind of limits that a lot. Um, yeah, Jupiter. Jupiter's ruling the second and mc right so yeah that's very strong mercury is debilitating and detriment it's not like um it's gonna have some some difficulties with um learning um but let's check here yeah station super so um interesting and then venus and mars mutual reception yeah didn't even realize that yeah that helps out mars a lot so. 
in Venus. In any case, um, that's Pisces, Piscean. Um, the Pisces, Jupiter, Pluto is going to have a very, very big view of things and tend to be a bit more spiritual, could be very creative as well. Um, but all embracing, definitely. Uh, and then Edgar Allan Poe has it more of an artistic one. And Edgar Allan Poe was an alcoholic and he killed, he destroyed himself um, and dark, right? Pluto can make a, a dark artist as well. Right? Charles Darwin, who was, you know, considered this great scientist, but he was, he was full of deception as well. Um, but there's no good time for him. I, otherwise I would have um, looked at his chart. And then Napoleon III, who's not, the original Napoleon, he was, a, but he was still a, a strong military leader, Napoleon the Third, as far as I know. Um, yeah, that is pretty much, pretty much it um, for Jupiter and Pluto. Very, very powerful belief system. Very deep, deep philosophy and and um, faith. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Please hit the like button if you are able to. It's not that hard. And it helps me a lot. And subscribe if you have not already. And leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Um, come to my class on Sunday. As I already said, just email me if you're not on the, on the list. Uh, 7 p.m. Philly, New York. And um, book reading with me. My website is macroastrology.com. My email is macrogoldmachine at yahoo.com. Uh, I will see you guys again soon. All right. Thanks. Bye.